This instructional video will help you set up your SPSS database for Lab 2, which will help you evaluate your intervention with older adults in the assisted living facility. This lab will be an exercise in how to use data and research to evaluate your social work practice. Let's get started. On your computer, go to All Programs. Click on SPSS or PASW. Once you open the program, click in Type in Data, and then OK. At the bottom of the screen, you see two options, Data View and Variable View. You must first define your variables before entering data. You must define your variables in the Variable, variable View window. Click on Variable View. You should see this screen. Each variable you define will get its own row of details. The very first variable you should always define is the participant ID number. Click in the first cell next to the number 1, which means first variable. Type in ID. Make sure there are no spaces between characters or SPSS will tell you you have made an error. Under Type, leave the default to Numeric. Under Width, which means the number of characters, leave the default to 8. Under Decimals, click in the box or just type in 0. In the Label box, this is the longhand explanation of ID, so type in Participant ID. Leave the values default to none. Under missing columns and align, leave the default to none 8 and write. Under measures, click in the cell and scroll down to nominal. Under role, scroll down to none. Remember the participant ID numbers for this lab are located in the upper right hand corner of each participant's pre and post test Rosenberg self-esteem scales. Remember, do not include the dash in the ID number as SPSS does not allow dashes in the variable names. Defining variables for standardized scales or instruments will require a few different and distinct steps. After defining the ID number, each item on the scale is going to get its own variable. For example, the Rosenberg self-esteem scale is a scale composed of 10 items. This is a measure of the construct self-esteem. Therefore, 10 variables need to be defined. The Rosenberg self-esteem scale is a scale level measurement. Items range from 1 to 4, and a total scale score is the result of adding all 10 items. Keep in mind, since we will be dealing with scale level variables, each of the scale items must have two decimal points. In this lab, since we are going to be giving the same scale to a group before and after an intervention, 
we must distinguish the pretest items from the post-test items when defining variables under the name column. In this case, we can use the prefix pre and post and the item number on the scale to define the variables. Don't forget to define missing data in the missing data column for every pre and post test variable. Once all variables items for pretest and post test have been defined, click on the data view at the bottom of your screen to begin entering each participant's data for both pre and post test items. You will find each participant's pre and post test in the participant data file in the SPSS lab number two folder. Remember, each participant will have all their pre and post test data entered on one row. Therefore, you must double check to match up the ID numbers for each participant's pre and post test. This lab will challenge your critical thinking skills in terms of using your knowledge about research to problem solve when participants don't follow directions regarding how to indicate responses on the standardized scale. In other words, you will encounter three participants whose data will force you to problem solve. Don't worry, we will debrief after the labs have been graded in order to process this challenge, the variety of choices you could have made to handle these three problematic surveys, and the pros and cons of each choice. Here are a few important, important reminders about setting up this database for this lab. Remember to email yourself your database so that you always have a backup copy. Remember that even if you email it to yourself, the only computer you can open an SPSS file on is a computer with SPSS software. Once all of your data is entered, scroll through the data view screen to check for any possible typos or cells you missed. If you made a mistake, use the participant ID number to find the specific survey to make corrections. Always remember to hit save periodically as SPSS has a tendency to freeze and quit while you're in the middle of working or entering your data. This concludes the instructional video for setting up your database for lab number two.